and there is Facebook. All right. All right, y'all. Prophet David Taylor here for your weekly live prophetic word. Now, I'm trying something different today in terms of um, how I'm broadcasting uh, because uh, I was told that before I was getting a lot of dropouts that the picture was freezing a lot and that um, a lot of people were being kicked out and then they had to log back on or whatever. So I'm trying something new. So I want y'all to tell me in the comics, comics, comments, whether or not it's working. So all of you that are watching me uh, live on Facebook right now, tell me in the comments when you sign on. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna type that in. Tell me in the comments. If you can see and hear me, okay. Okay, because I'm doing something new. Uh, so I want to be sure to get some live feedback to be sure this is working. Otherwise, I'll go back and uh, do it like I did it before. But um, uh, I just want to be sure that, again, you can see me and hear me okay. So... Uh, Looks like somebody's on, but I can't see who's on. So whoever's on, please uh, go to the comments. Let me know if you can see me and hear me okay. Everything is good because I'm trying to get rid of those dropouts, okay? So I can want to make sure that the broadcast is smooth and that everybody can, um, can hear and see everything that I'm doing, okay? All right. <clears throat> so we're going to go to prayer, and then we're going to dive right in to today's live prophetic word. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Lord, that everything about you is faithful. Lord, you are faithful every day, and your mercy stretches from everlasting to everlasting. So you created mercy for us, O oh God, before you even made us. You had already decided to extend mercy because that's just who you are. And I just thank you for being God all by yourself. I thank you for being good God. I thank you for being totally stable. I thank you that you don't bend and change according to our whims. I thank you that you are our rock. So Lord, I should fill me with the Holy Ghost right now, Lord. Fill every part of me. Fill my tongue, my mind, my heart, my hands, Lord, every part of me. Take over, oh God, so you can breathe through me and speak the words that you want spoken, oh God, that you might be glorified and that the saints might be edified, that the demons might be terrified, oh God, and that you might get the glory in all things to extend your eternal kingdom. And thank you for an opportunity this day on earth November in 2019, to be a part of your program. I thank you for it, and I believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. amen. Oh, Tanisha, you can see me. Okay, Stacy, can you see me and hear me? I want to be sure everybody can see me and hear me. I'm trying to avoid the dropouts. The lighting looks different to me, so it might look a little bit darker. So I don't know. So again, just let me know how it's coming across, but I just want to be sure uh, I can get uh, rid of those dropouts if I can help it, okay? So when you come on, please like and share. Please like and share this broadcast because whenever God releases a prophetic word, uh, everybody needs to hear it, okay? The saints in particular need to hear it so that they can be edified and built up so they can hear what the Lord, okay? Yeah, so that they can hear what the Lord is trying to say to them, okay? Now, I want you to remember, before I get into the word itself, I want you to remember that there are three kinds of word. There's three levels of word we're dealing with. We're dealing with the written word, which is the Bible. We're dealing with the living word, which is Jesus. And we're dealing with the prophetic word or the rhema word, the fresh breathed word of God. And I want to remind you that nobody in the Bible had the Bible. <laughs> in the New Testament, when the Lord shows up, they have the Old Testament scriptures and they quote them a lot. But they did not have the completed canon of scripture like we do because they were living out what came to be known as the New Testament. So nobody in the Bible had the Bible. So how did they follow God? They had to follow God through the prophetic, okay? Through the prophetic word, through the rhema word, through the prophet system that God set up from the beginning. So that's what I mean when I say, and you see when I get into today's message about how important it is to stay in step and stay in sync with the Lord, because Jesus is a person, not a set of rules. And when the Lord, as the head of the church, when he moves, what happens when your head tells your body to do something? You expect your body to respond. 
your fine motor skills, your fingers, your toes, your appendages, your arm, your, your arms, your legs. Whenever your brain tells your body to do something, you expect it to move. If something goes amiss and that doesn't happen, that's some form of epilepsy, that's some form of malady. Something is not right if your brain is sending out commands and your body is not responding. That being the case, what a lot of people don't understand is that they're giving the Lord spiritual epilepsy. The head of the church is saying stuff, but the body is not responding with obedience to the commands, and that is spiritual epilepsy. Some people, some saints, are bones out of joint. And what that means is that God has called you to be in one place, but you're so busy trying to be something that you're not. You're so busy trying to get yourself someplace that Jesus hasn't called you. You are bones out of joint. Have you ever had a bone out of joint? Have you ever, ever broken a bone or ever twisted your ankle or ever done anything to your toes or done anything to where your bone was out of place? You know what that feels like? That's what a lot of saints, uh, that's the kind of pain they cause Jesus because they're out of step with what the Lord is doing. If the Lord called you to be the wrist, you got to be the wrist. You can't be the elbow. God didn't call you to be the elbow. If God called you to be the wrist, you got to be the wrist. If God called you to be the nose, you can't be the ears. Okay? If God called you to be this right here, to be the nose, you can't be the ears. And a lot of Christians are bones out of joint. They're not in the place in the body that they're supposed to be as ordained by Jesus, the head of the church. Okay? So all this is going to come into play as I continue with the lesson. But you need to understand that. If you've ever wondered why you can go to a church and it seems dull and dead and dry, and the pastor preaches the same sermon every Sunday, and the choir sings about the same half dozen songs, about six songs that the choir sings every week. Have you ever wondered why that happens? That happens because they're not moving in the prophetic. That's why. They have religion. They have traditions. They have customs. But they're not coming every Sunday to get into the flow of the Holy Ghost and ask the Spirit of God, what do you want today? What are the songs for today? Not that you don't practice and rehearse, but you can sing spiritual songs on the spot. What's the flow? How does the Lord want us to praise him today? And what is the Lord saying to us today? Because when you get in the prophetic flow, the whole service flows together. All the worship, all the prophecy, all the songs, uh, all the preaching, all the ministry, okay? But that has to be the fresh breathe, the rhema word, what the Lord is saying right now. That comes through the prophetic. That's why if you don't have the prophetic dimension in your life, that's why you're still singing songs from 20 years ago. If you don't have the prophetic dimension in your life, that's why your church seems so dull and dead and dry, and you keep doing the same things every Sunday. That's because you, are, you might have the written word, you might have the Bible, but you don't have the rhema word. You don't have the prophetic word. What is the Lord saying now? This is November 24th of 2019. What is God saying to you now? Because in what we call the Lord's Prayer, remember that the Lord never called it that, but anyway, what we call the Lord's Prayer, you've been saying it to Jesus every day since you was 12 years old. Give us this day our daily bread. How do people miss that? How can you be praying that prayer to God, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed or reverence be to thy name? Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. How can you have been saying that all your life and you think that God only speaks on Sunday? Or you think you don't have to talk to the Lord every day? Or you think that God doesn't have a word for you for the day? That's how you end up out of step, out of sync, out of joint, out of line with Jesus. And the Lord has moved on and you 20 years behind. God called you to do something, <coughs> excuse me, in, in, uh, in 1990, okay? And, and you still haven't done it. You are years behind the Lord, okay? God called you in 1990, this is 2019, and you are years behind in the will of God. That's because <coughs> you don't understand the living word, you don't understand that Jesus is a person not a set of rules, okay? There are no denominations in the Bible. So you don't understand that Jesus is a person and you don't understand that he releases 
his prophetic word, his rhema word, every day, our daily bread. What do you want me to do on Monday? What do you want me to do on Tuesday? What do you want me to do on Wednesday? What do you want me to do on Thursday? What do you want me to do on Friday? What do you want me to do on Saturday? Now, some of y'all listening to me, that's the first time in your life you ever heard anybody say that. Because you keep thinking God is somebody you meet at church on Sunday, you talk to him once a week for 15 minutes, and then you go live your life. You will be out of sync with the Lord. And your life will be stagnant. You won't have any breakthroughs. You won't be able to cast out any demons because you haven't been building up your faith. If the devil sends something at you that's higher than your level of faith, that's how a whole lot of Christians get taken out early. Now, my pastor started a series on praying against premature death and casting out uh, the spirit of death and all the, thing associate, all the things associated with death because we're not supposed to die before our time. But if you don't know that as a Christian, that's how many times the enemy ends up taking the saints out early. And that's also going to tie into uh, our lesson for the day when I get to our scripture. So I can't stress to you enough, again, the three levels of word, the written word, which is the Bible, the living word, which is Jesus the Christ, because the Lord is a person, not a set of rules, and the rhema word, the prophetic word, the word that God breathes fresh out of his mouth every day to get you in his will. You have to have all three. You have to be strong in scripture. You have to be strong in your personal relationship with Jesus. And you have to be strong in the prophetic. That's how you stay in step with the Lord. You know the, you know the written word. You know the living word personally. The Lord speaks to you. You have quiet, private time together. You have time you spend with the good shepherd. And he whispers to you and you whisper to him and you open your heart to him and he opens his heart to you and you have intimate fellowship with the one that died for you to save your soul. And then the third level of word is the rhema word, the prophetic, where God breathes out his will day by day. Because those of you that don't walk in the prophetic, some people are 20 and 30 years behind. There are things that God, some of y'all listen to me right now, you live in a city that you should have moved out of and God told you to move a long time ago and you didn't want to hear it. You didn't discern it in the prophetic or the Lord said it to you and you just threw it out and you thought that you could just stay wherever you wanted to stay and that just God would bless you. But God called you to be somebody else, be somewhere else because the blessings of God and the power of God are always in the will of God. One more time. The blessings of God and the power of God are always, always, always in the will of God, okay? And if you are out of the will of God, that's why you don't have any power in your life. That's why you haven't received that full blessing. You've been waiting on and waiting on and waiting on. You've got to get lined up. You've got to get in sync. You've got to be in sync with the head of the church, which is Jesus Christ. Okay, I can't stress that enough. And I know some of you listening to me, that's the first time in your life you ever heard anybody explain that to you. Because somebody told you a long time ago that Christianity is just going to church. That is incorrect. That Christianity is about, well, I'm just trying to make a hundred. I'm just trying to make it in heaven. I'm just trying to go to heaven when I die. That's incorrect. Once you get born again, you are already in the kingdom of God. You already have your name written in heaven. You're already a part of the family. The day you got saved, heaven was your home. You're not trying to make it in. You don't have to try to make it in. You're already in. That's why Jesus died to get you in. Just like when you are born physically, you're a part of the family. When I came out of my mother's womb, they named me David Taylor. That's still my name. <laughs> I'm still my daddy's son. Why? Because I only have to be born in the natural one time. Well, as it is in the natural, so it is in the spirit. The day you got saved, then Jesus became your elder brother. Father God became your father. And the Holy Spirit of God sealed you in the spirit because you got born again. You ain't trying to make it in heaven. You're already a part of the heavenly host. You're already a part of the company of the kingdom. So some of y'all listening to me have been hearing a bunch of bad doctrine your whole life, trying to tell you that you're trying to make it in, that you're striving to make a hundred. That I get no, 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 no. You are already in. You're already part of the family. But the key is, after I get saved, 
What am I supposed to do? And that leads me into our scripture and our lesson for today. So I'm going to read you our first scripture. Our first scripture is coming out of Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, and I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. Here we go. I'm reading out the King James Version. Remember that Romans is in the New Testament, and Romans is a Pauline epistle. That means it was written by the Apostle Paul, the Apostle Paul. The reason it's called Romans is because he wrote it to the Christians in the city of Rome, okay? Rome, Italy. So the very same Rome that you know on the map today, in Paul's day, the Christians that were in Rome, he wrote this letter to them, okay? So I'm going to read verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I know you hear me say it all the time, but there's a lot to unpack in those verses. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through them so we can get to the main point. Paul says, I beseech you, Right off the bat, since Paul says, I beseech you, that means I implore you. Um, it means I, I strongly encourage you. It means to please hear what I'm saying right off the bat, that I ought to tell you that God does not force you to serve him. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. Paul has spent 11 chapters talking about God's grace and mercy. So when you read uh, Romans 1 through 11, you will hear about all the wonderful things that God, done, God has done uh, through grace and mercy and through faith. So Paul is saying, so brothers, I'm urging you, since we have all this mercy and grace coming from God, that you present your body a living sacrifice. That means you have to do it. You hear me say it all the time. You can't just accept Jesus as Savior. You have to also accept him as Lord, okay? You present your body a living sacrifice. That means that you're still alive when you nail yourself to the altar. What that means in practical terms is that you stop living for yourself and you start living for Christ. You stop following your plan and you start following Jesus's plan. That's what it means to be a living sacrifice, that I give up the rights and the control to my life over to the Lord and I let him be my Lord. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, that means that holy living for the Christian is proper, okay? That, the, that we ought to be living a life that when God looks at it, he's pleased with what he sees. It's acceptable to him because there's some things as believers that sometimes we do that are not acceptable to God. And then Paul says it's your reasonable service. In other words, since Father sent the Son down here to get, get arrested and beaten and spit upon and, and whipped and crucified and nailed to a cross for six hours, and laid in a grave for us, for me, since Father has already shown his love and his grace, and Jesus has already shown his love and his grace and his commitment to us by going through that. Paul is saying it's not unreasonable for us to give God some service. <laughs> it is not unreasonable for God to ask you as a Christian to serve him after all that he did to get you saved, which leads me to verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. That means don't live like sinners. It, when it says the world, it doesn't mean the earth. It doesn't mean the planet earth. It means the world system, the way the devil does things, the way sinners do things. People that don't believe in God, they live a certain way. Paul is saying, don't look like that. Don't let that be your standard. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, your life changes as a Christian as you make your thoughts new. Here's what I've been trying to get to, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And there it is. You have to prove out the will of God for your life, and there are different levels of his will. If you're at the good level, okay, then at least you're following the Lord. If you're at the acceptable level, that means that the life you're living is pleasing enough to God but the perfect will of God, that word perfect, okay, coming out of the Greek, it means complete. 
So in other words, the perfect will of God is where you are becoming everything that God wants you to become. You are doing everything that God wants you to do, and you're bearing the fruit that God wants you to bear. You're not doing all that when you're just at the good level, because when you first get saved, you might have to start out at the good level, just like going to church, learning how to pay tithes, learning how to read your Bible every day. That's good, okay? But you're starting out at that level. And acceptable means you, you learn, start learning how to, you know, crucify your flesh and you're not living like a worldly person. You're not living like an unbeliever. But to get into the perfect will of God means that you have surrendered the rights to your life in every area to Christ. And you're doing what the Lord wants you to do every day, not just on Sunday, but seven days a week you get up and you start your day by surrendering the control of your life to the Lord, and you tell the Lord, not my will, but thine be done. You lead me, you guide me, you tell me what you want me to do, what you want me to accomplish today, okay? And the Bible says that you have to prove it out. I cannot stress that enough. You have to prove it out. 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 Why do I keep saying that? And what does that mean in practical terms? In practical terms, what that means is that a lot of people have been taught the wrong concept that the will of God just happens. That's not true. The will of God does not just happen, okay? Because God is a person. Remember how I told you that Jesus is a person? The Lord is a person, okay? And you have to seek the Lord. You have to come before the Lord every day because he's not going to force you. You have to ask the Lord. You know, what is your will? What do you want me to do? You have to ask. That's why you hear me when I pray. I ask to be filled with the Holy Ghost, okay? Because it's not automatic. You got to ask. You got to let God know every day, I'm willing to be who you want me to be today. I'm willing to do what you want me to do today. I'm willing to, to get in the center of your will. I completely relinquish control of what I wanted, and now you tell me what you want, Okay? Now, why is that so important? Why is that so important? Why have I spent so much time laboring over this point? Okay, well, it's important for more than one reason. But one of the main reasons it's important is because your life will never come into focus until you get in the center of the perfect will of God. If you've been wondering why you've been struggling, and if you've been struggling for a long time, you have to ask yourself as a Christian, am I in the perfect will of God? Am I right in the center of his perfect will? Because sometimes what you're struggling with is a closed door. You keep trying to go somewhere where the Lord ain't telling you to go. You keep trying to do something that the Lord ain't telling you to do. You keep signing up for stuff that the Lord's not leading you to do. And when you have that kind of frustration, especially over a long period of time, you're supposed to stop, slow down, Go back before the Lord, lay down all of your expectations, lay down all of your requests, lay down of all, all of your thoughts, and then ask Jesus, what do you want me to do? That's the only way your life ever comes together. That's the only way your life will make sense. Some of y'all listen to me, you went through a very rough childhood. You had a lot of things happen to you when you were still young, and you know good and well they weren't your fault. You felt persecution. And you know, you didn't do anything. That was the devil attacking you when you were young, trying to get you off track, trying to scar you, trying to make you angry and bitter, trying to make you hate God, trying to make you distrust God, trying to make you not go to church. That's the, one of the favorite attacks of the enemy, especially if your parents aren't doing their job. He hits you when you're still a child to make you hate God, hate church, hate people, hate Christians and all the different kind of stuff to push you away from the will of God. Because remember, the devil has known God longer than we have. And the devil knows if he can get you away from God, your life ain't gonna never come together. The only way for all of that to make sense, for God to show you that he's worked it together for your good, for God to show you that no matter what your pain, he can redeem your pain if you turn it over to him. The only way for that to happen is for you to get in the perfect will of God. That's not where you only talk to God once a week you only talk to God on Sunday where you got a little bit of Jesus and a little bit of you. 
and a little bit of spirit and a little bit of flesh and a little bit of the kingdom of heaven and a little bit of the kingdom of the world. That is not the perfect will of God. That's being double-minded and wishy-washy, and that's going to get you judged. If you're being double-minded and you got one, the old folks used to call it one foot in the church and one foot in the world, that's going to get you judged. God, you're going to get a whipping. You got to make up your mind to follow God because God is not going to be your second choice. God is not going to be your side guy. God is not going to be, he's not going to share his place in your life with whatever God you want to worship. You got to make up your mind to accept Jesus as Lord and lay down everything before him, not 50%, not 80%. Everything in your life, your money, your relationships, your sexuality, your time, your career, your education, your living space, your clothes, your diet, you name it, you got to lay it down before Jesus and ask the Lord, what is your will? What do you want me to do? I lay down my will so that I can come alive to your will. That's the only way your life is ever going to make sense to you. If you don't do that, you're going to live all your days on earth and your life's not going to make any sense and you won't understand what happened until after you die. And when you go to heaven, then the Lord will show you all that he meant for you to have in this life if you had gotten into obedience to his perfect will. Okay? So you need to get in God's perfect will just for your life to come together and just for your life to make sense. Number one. Number two, let me read you this other scripture. Apostle Paul, again, in 2 Timothy, that's in the New Testament, these are Paul's letters to his, uh, someone he was mentoring and a young pastor named Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I'm reading now the King James Version. Apostle Paul says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto, but unto all them also that love his appearing. What did Paul just tell you? Paul said, I fought a good fight. I have finished my course. Now, most of the other translations say I have finished the race. And the King James is really one of the few that says I finished my course. But the idea is still the same. In other words, God has a very specific race, a very specific plan, a very specific thing for you to do with your life. And you've got to finish your course. You've got to finish your life. You've got to finish whatever God's plan is for you. That's why you don't have time to be messing around being out of the will of God. Why would you spend a whole bunch of time being out of the will of God? Because your life's not going to count. You're going to stand before God in judgment and God's going to say, you didn't do none of what I wanted you to do. So there's no reward for you. Why? Why would you end that way? We need to end like Paul ended, knowing that I've done what God saved me for. I've done what the Lord wanted me to do with my life. I did in my generation what the Lord called me to do. So both in this day, the day you're living now, and in the future day when you get ready to die, you want to be in the will of God. You want to know that you're doing with your life what the Lord wanted you to do with your life, and you don't want to have any deviations, okay? You don't want to be too far ahead of the Lord. You don't want to be behind the Lord. You don't want to turn to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. You want to be right in the center of what God wants you to do because that's the only way your life's going to make sense. That's the only way you're going to get the prosperity that you want. And let me, let me, since I'm there, since I brought that up, let me speak on that for just a minute. When you listen to people teach you about prosperity, prosperity is absolutely a part of serving God because prosperity comes from following God as, jo as God said in Joshua 1.8, that when you meditate in the word and observe to do, you make your way prosperous and then you're gonna have good success. But what a lot of these prosperity people aren't telling you is that prosperity comes from obedience. It doesn't come just because you're saved. If you are saved and you are disobedient, you're not gonna prosper. If you are saved and you're not doing what the Lord told you to do, you are not going to prosper. Prosperity in the kingdom of heaven comes from obedience. That's why I spend all that time telling you, you can't just accept him as savior. You must also accept him as Lord. Okay? So I'm going to release the prophetic word. Let me do a quick review, and I'm going to release the prophetic word that the Lord gave me for today. I started out by telling you that there are three kinds of word. There's the Bible, the written word, 
There's Jesus, the living word, and then there's the rhema word, the prophetic word that comes out of God's mouth every day. I told you that you, you need a relationship with God every day when you go before the Lord and you receive his word, his will, on a daily basis, not once a week on Sunday. I told you that uh, the perfect will of God is something that you have to seek, that you have to choose, and that you have to prove out. God's perfect will for your life doesn't just happen automatically. You have to seek it, you have to surrender to it, and you have to prove it out. That's why sometimes it takes some time to get in it. it takes some time for the Lord to cut away the fat and cut away the flesh and cut away your old habits so you can get right in the center of what God wants you to do. I told you that you cannot just accept Jesus as Savior. You must also accept him as Lord. If you don't do that, your life is never going to come together. You can't get born again and then just do what you want to do. Okay? I told you that to get into the prosperity blessing that you want, that comes from obedience. That comes from being in the will of God. And if you are in disobedience, you ain't never going to prosper. And when you get ready to die, you don't want to die only to discover that you wasted your life on earth, that you never did any of what God wanted you to do, because then you have no reward from God. But like Apostle Paul said, if you fight the good fight, you finish your course, you finish your race. In other words, whatever it was that God wanted you to do in this life, Spend your days doing that, and then you can die with confidence knowing that there's a crown of righteousness laid up for you and, and to all those that love is appearing, all those that have spent their lives being obedient to what Jesus said. And I also told you that uh, the will of God, whatever it is for you, whatever part you are on Jesus's body, if you're the wrist, be the wrist. Don't try to be the elbow if God hasn't made you the elbow. If you the nose, be the nose. Don't try to be the ears if God hasn't made you the ears. That's why you have to prove out the will of God and ask Jesus, what part of your body am I? Am I the mouth? Am I the hands? Am I the eyes? Am I the ears? What part of your body am I, Jesus? And, and show me, put me where you want me to be so I can do what you created me to do. Okay? Now I'm going to release the prophetic word, and here it is. For behold, my people, I have brought you unto your 2020 season, the season of perfect vision, the season of perfect clarity. Therefore, my people, I am calling you to get in the center of my perfect will for you. And as you spend time in my word, in prayer, in my glory, in worship, my spirit will align you so that you will know what my perfect will is for you, you will know when you're in the center of it and you will know that you're serving me the way I want you to. Therefore, I release unto you, my people, a spirit of spiritual precision. I release unto you a spirit of spiritual precision that through my grace, through my word and through my spirit, I will align you with me, with the head of the church, so you can get right in the middle of where I want you to be, and you will no more run ahead of me. You will no more lag behind me. You will no more turn to the right hand or the left to go after other gods to serve them. And as you get in the center of my perfect will, and as you learn how to stay in it, I will cause you to triumph over every enemy that comes against you and I will give you victory every single day for the rest of your life, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. I'm going to have to go back and meditate uh, on that some more myself because God's promising us and we get this perfect will that nobody's going to be able to stand against us, that no enemy will never be defeated, that we'll be victorious every day if we get in the center of his perfect will. See, that's worth living for. That's worth living for. That's worth living for, uh, knowing that your life will come together, that full prosperity will be yours, that no enemy, no enemy. You know how people quote all the time, no weapon formed against me shall prosper? 
Okay, but what they're missing is that's if you're being obedient. <laughs> there are so many Christians that aren't prospering, and there are so many Christians that end up getting in trouble, things they could have avoided, because no weapon formed against you is going to prosper, but you need to be obedient. Okay, you can't just be living any kind of way you want to live. Okay, and so God is promising us victory over our enemies and daily victory for the rest of our days. How is that a bad deal? How is that a bad offer? When God says, if you listen to me and you obey me and you get in my perfect will, then nothing's going to be able to defeat you and you're going to walk victoriously every single day, not just on Sunday, every single day until you die. Where's the downside? I'm just asking a question. All right. If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen so I can pray for you uh, because I'll be happy to pray for you. When you see me close my eyes and go into the spirit, I'm asking the Lord if there are any more prophetic words on in general, any more prophetic words about finances, any sickness that needs to be healed and any demons that need to be cast out because that all of that is our inheritance as Christians. Okay. You don't have to be sick. You don't have to be demonically oppressed. Okay, you don't have to be broke and you don't have to go through your life not knowing what God wants. All that belongs to us as Christians. That's why I do that in my broadcast, okay? All right, so anything you want me to pray about, put it on the screen. Okay, God is saying to many people listening to me right now, God is saying to you, I have heard you. I have heard your prayer, but now it's time for you to hear me. Hmm. One more time. God is saying, I've heard you. I've heard your prayer, but now it's time for you to hear me. Second Chronicles 2020, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established and believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. All right, I think that's it. So amen and praise God. I'm excited about getting in the perfect will of God. I tell you every week that there's nothing I'm saying to you that I'm not doing, okay? And the last thing I wanna say is I wanna remind you that at the end of every year, I give what is called a prophetic locator word. I give one in December and I give one in January. The prophetic locator word lines up with Revelation chapter two and chapter three where you get your grades from Jesus. People don't understand that the Lord was not just talking to the seven churches in, in Asia in Revelation two and three. The Lord was talking to the church. That's why he said seven times, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit says to the church. So in other words, Jesus is in heaven giving us our grade. So at the end of every year, at the end of December, on December 30th or 31st every year, I release a prophetic locator word that's about getting your grades from Jesus, about asking the Lord, how did I do this year? Was I in your perfect rule this year? What did I waste time on? Where did I veer off? How did I miss you this year? And what did I do right? What are you pleased with? What did I do that was right what you wanted me to do? That's a prophetic locator word, getting your grades from Jesus. That's in the end of December. Every year I do that on my YouTube channel. Then at the beginning of the new year, in this case, that'll be 2020, I release a prophetic, prophetic locator word to cover the new year. What does the Lord want us to do for the new year? What direction is he pointing us in? Because we want to start out the year in the will of God. You need to know what is the Lord saying to me in January of the new year so I can uh, get in the center of that will so I can be obedient. Okay? So that's coming up. So... I'm not sure if I'll do it live. I don't, don't normally do it live. Normally I put together a video. So I have to ask the Lord. If I have to put together a video, then I'll post it. It'll drop on December 31st and January 1st. That's normally the way I do it. So if I feel led to do it differently, I'll let you know. But otherwise, that's going to be my YouTube channel at the end of this year and the beginning of next year. Those two locator words to help you get your grades from Jesus and then find out how God wants us to start 2020. Where should we be? And I'm talking about practical stuff. Make sure you're at the right church. Make sure you're living in the right space. 
Make sure you're going to the right school. Make sure you have the right job. Make sure you're in the right relationships. Ask Jesus and the Lord will align you to make sure we're in his perfect will. All right? Well, amen and amen. Thank you so much to those of you that tuned in to watch me live. Thanks to those of you that are listening to me on the podcast. Thanks to those of you that are watching the rebroadcast on Facebook Live, Periscope, or YouTube. Thanks so much. I appreciate all your help and support. And I say it every week, but you know I feel honored and I feel blessed and fortunate to be a part of God's kingdom because God don't need me. What does God need me for? Please name it. God don't need me, but he gave me an opportunity to serve him. And he created me and called me to be a prophet and a writer. I write uh, comic books. I write children's books. I write sci-fi fantasy. I write music. I write plays. I have a prophetic anointing. I have a scribe anointing. That's what he called me to do. And that's what I'm spending my days doing. So once again, once again, I'm not saying anything to you that I'm not doing myself. So I count it a blessing and an honor that he gave me an opportunity to work in his kingdom while I have a chance, okay? And I urge and beseech you, my brothers and my sisters, surrender to the perfect will of God. Work in his kingdom while you have a chance, okay? Amen and amen. I trust you're gonna take this prophetic word and teaching to heart and that it's gonna change your life. Please remember to like and share because there are other Christians that need to see it. Because remember, I told you last week, the Holy Ghost gave me a vision. I've seen a whole bunch of people, yea, even a nation of people in confusion. God is not a God of confusion. Once we seek his face, we call out to him, we pray to him, he hears us. And then he just said, no, we need to hear him, what he's saying, so we can drop whatever else we were thinking and get in his perfect will, because that's where the blessings are. All right. Amen. God bless you. And I will see you uh, next Sunday. 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Amen and God bless.